Let's uh, make sure focus is all on me right here, Mr. Camera Dude. It's not a camera dude, it's just my phone. And it's apparently having trouble finding me today. I think it likes the background and frankly I don't um, begrudge it that. The background looks far better than I do. But I brushed my hair and then put a hat on top of it just for you, camera. Why? Why? Okay, enough hamming aside. Let's uh, drink Pelican Brewing's Cascadian Dark Ale. They're bad Santa. I must say, I appreciate Pelican Brewing for calling this a Cascadian Dark Ale and not a black IPA. Because a black IPA, well, it's a oxymoron, you know. It's a, literally, a dark pale thing, right? Uh, IPA, India Pale Ale, is not dark. It is pale. And this does not use pale malts in its brewing. I mean, there might be some, but it can't be named for it because it's clearly not pale, right? Would you call it a pale beer? No, it's not pale beer. Um, a few years ago, when darker, heavily hopped beers uh, started becoming a thing, one of the original uh, marketing terms for them were black IPAs. Uh, which, I mean, it kind of tells you what it is, right? It's a darker beer that is heavily hopped, because IPA just means heavily hopped to most people, right? But I'm a snob. I can't stand for that. There has to be accuracy in the terms. Accuracy, I tell you. <sighs> Sorry, I'm still hamming it up. <laughs> Anyways, this is Bad Santa Cascadian Dark Ale. Bad Santa Cascadian Dark Ale by Pelican Brewing out of Oregon. And a Cascadian Dark Ale, because it has been a little while since I've reviewed one of these, is a heavily hopped dark ale. Um, some people complain that the term Cascadian Dark Ale kind of uh, regionalizes, forcibly regionalizes the, uh, the, the title. Cascadia would be the, the western and tip, specifically the northwestern uh, coast of the United States, Cascadia. And there's no reason why you can't have a Cascadian Dark Ale made in Florida, or the United Kingdom, or France, or Germany, or wherever for that matter. But, you also call hazy IPAs New England IPAs. So, until they find a better word, maybe an Ida, IDA, India Dark Ale, that even India kind of regionalizes things, and we've all just agreed, yeah, whatever, it doesn't mean India anymore. It's a... Names. Right? Who cares? It's just good beer. <sighs> hmm. It smells, um... It smells of hops, and it smells of dark, earthy, uh, toasted wood. Not, not like campfire, burny, roasty, but like the wood's definitely been darkened a bit. But it's a, it's a dark wood, like a, like a, a mahogany or something like that. I don't know what burning mahogany smells like. I just kind of have this mental bookmark, right? You, you, you think of <laughs> half of this is how I do my tasting notes. Oh, this smells like, you know, ants. How do I know what ants taste like? Well, because when I was four, I ate some, and now I've got this mental bookmark of that weird little biting acidity slash burny flavor being the taste of an ant, right? And I don't know what ants taste like. <laughs> but I got this mental bookmark that tells me this flavor category is ant-like, right? Well, I don't actually say anything tastes like ants, really. Probably just because I haven't found the right thing to taste yet. But... I also don't what, know what smelling mahogany tastes like in contrast to, say, more normal wood-burning things. But there is a, a toasted woodiness to this. <laughs> and it feels like a super dense, super heavy wood. Which, in my mind, is a mahogany. Right? So that's what I've gone with. The hops to the nose are more to the earthy side. 
So it's not smelling like vibrant fields of flowers and, and, and herbs. It's smelling earthy, woody, that kind of thing. Um, dark, dark forest undergrowth kind of stuff. Which is perfectly good. Um, the way uh, Cascadian dark ales um, are made is they simply use darker grains to produce a darker beer. And then they hop it, like they would an IPA. So that's literally what it is. It is an, it is an IPA level of hoppiness applied to a darker ale. Uh, so this, is, this closest cousin would be like a, a brown ale, or an extra special bitters, or an amber, something like that, a red ale. And the color's right, right in that family. Um, it smells good. It looks good. Let's see if it tastes good. It tastes like a vacuum cleaner. That just sucked up a seesaw. <laughs> Sorry. No. Um, earthy. Woody. Roasty. Malty. Uh... Way back when, when I was first getting into beers, I quickly found Ambers as a favorite, and my wife did too. She kind of preferred the, um, like the uh, O'Hara's, um, was it O'Hara's? Yeah, O'Hara's um, Irish Ale. That's a red ale that's lightly hopped and has a very smooth, char characteristically smooth uh, flavor to it. And it, it bakes really well and it drinks really well, right? Uh, I preferred the more traditional ambers, which are more heavily hopped. And I liked them because they balanced the maltiness with the hoppiness. Um, I suppose that was my gateway into now appreciating IPAs more than I might have in the past. Uh, but this just kind of goes amber up to 11, right? It goes to 11 from whatever that movie is that a few people can quote sometimes. While the maltiness hasn't necessarily been amped, the hoppiness definitely has. As I get further into it, I'm getting more orange peel, citrus peel kind of stuff, but it's really faint. It's just that kind of that acid bite or um, acidic uh, bitter bite of the orange peel without it necessarily being identifiably orange. Um, it's more like if you put an orange peel on a log. Maybe. Probably not. But, right? As long as I'm making up flavor tone terms, I hope they're at least evocative and produce a picture in your mind that allows you to understand somewhat of how I am experiencing this beer. <laughs> so, orange peel on a log it is. Because at least, you know, more people know that what that tastes like rather than a vacuum cleaner that sucked up a seesaw. Which was a joke, by the way. In case you hadn't got that yet. Sorry. I'm trying not to be condescending. I'm trying to be accurate in my presentation of the facts. As I, uh, drink them. The roastiness produces almost, um, some sort of a, of a uh, dark, like, unsweetened chocolate, um, finish. And so you're not left with this, like, pine cone mouth finish thing, you're left with this, um, like, super dark, like, chocolate frosting, but, like, unsweetened chocolate frosting. It has almost a, a creaminess as I'm finishing it. I'm wondering if it has some wheat in its mash bill, possibly. So it has this kind of interesting creaminess, and then this really, really dark, dark brown, woody, roasty, earthy uh, character that and unsweetened chocolate seems to me to touch upon, or this combination touches upon an unsweetened chocolate, something like that. Uh, so that creaminess plus that plus that uh, that kind of brown dark flavor, it's kind of an interesting. It's pleasant. I don't think you have to be a full-on hop head to appreciate this beer or its finish. I think if you like ambers, you might be able to enjoy this, possibly in moderation to begin with, but then in increasing and increasing quantities. Cascadian Dark Ales, or India Dark Ales, right? Let's just call them Ida's. They're Ida's now. We're gonna start it here. You heard it first, it's an Ida. Um, India Dark Ales, Cascadian Dark Ales, are 
are very nice winter style beers or winter beers for people who like hops um, and maybe want that after or between their various drafts, dra drafts, drafts. How do you pronounce that? Drafts, drafts. I've heard them both. Um, let's just split the difference. They're they're they're, they're drafts of of the thick and sweet and uh, sometimes cloying stouts and porters that are the the name of the season for so many people. Um, this can be a bit of a palate cleanser, I think, and a very pleasant one. A very pleasant one. Uh, I like it. I like it a lot. I can see this going very well with like a super rich, unctuous, like uh, mushroom and bacon uh, cheeseburger kind of thing. No, not cheeseburger. Just mushroom and bacon. Well, Swiss cheese. Mushroom and bacon Swiss cheeseburger, right? It has the darkness to kind of go along with the, the, the darkly browned uh, mushrooms and the, the, the grilled meats. Um, it has the bitterness to counteract that and kind of balance it. And then, and then, yeah, I mean, because bacon pairs well with everything. It just gets along and says, hey, let's get together. And everything else says, yeah, bacon, we'll get together because people like you more. And on that note, I will leave you. This is me, Matthew. I've been drinking and definitely enjoying Bad Santa, a Cascadian Dark Ale, an India Dark Ale, and Ida by Pelican Brewing. I'll catch y'all on the flip side. <laughs>